So the good thing about the SAT is that it's an exam of repetition. But sometimes College Board blesses us with new types of questions and we all get screwed over. And that's exactly what happened during the digital SAT practice tests that were recently released. And today we're going to go over three of these new styles of questions so that you can be prepared and score higher on your next SAT. So guys, these three questions are not going to be like crazy hard by any means, but they are essentially curveballs that you haven't seen before. And as far as I know, they are not really taught inside any of these SAT prep books that I have seen. And this is what the first question looks like. And if I were you, here's what I would focus throughout this video. One, how the question is solved. Two, the main concept behind each of these questions. And three, understanding how it all ties in together. And these three questions are going to be in the order of increasing difficulty. So I highly recommend you get a piece of paper and try these questions out yourself and watch the solution video afterwards and see if you can actually solve the third and the last question. So let's get straight into it. First question, we're given this equation right there. The graph of the given equation is a circle in the XY plane. The point AB lies on the circle, which of the following is a possible value of A? So we know that A is going to be just the X coordinate, X coordinate of the point that lies on the circle. And from there, we have to find one possible value of A or X coordinate of the point that lies on the circle. So the key point here is the idea of point lying on the circle, because if you visualize it, let's say we have a circle right there. If a point is on the circle, it's literally just going to be on the circle, right? But what does it mean equation wise? We're given a equation of a circle right there. And if the coordinate is on the circle, that means when you plug it in for X and Y, the equation is going to be true if the point is on the circle. So what is a possible value of A? Well, let's plug it in and test it out. So let's try choice A. Let's say A, our X coordinate is going to be negative 16. Then we're going to plug in negative 16 to our X value right there. And we're going to get negative 16 right there. We're going to get negative 12 squared plus y minus 19 squared is equal to 121. And we know negative 12 squared is just 144. And we have to add something to it in order for it to make it to 121. And we ask ourselves, okay, can this be true? Can our a value be negative 16? Because you essentially just need to subtract something from 144 so that you end up with 121. But there's one problem. You see how the second portion of the equation, the second half right there, you see that everything, whatever we get inside the parentheses, it has to be squared. And when anything is squared, you're always going to end up with a positive value. And when you end up with a positive value and you add it to 144, there's no way that you're going to get 121. Whether you square a negative number or square a positive number, your result is always going to be positive value. So long story short, when our A is equal to negative 16, we have to subtract something from 144 so that we get 121 and our equation becomes true and the coordinate is on the line. But the problem is the second half is squared and whenever you square anything it's always going to be positive. So we cannot subtract anything, which means our equation will never be true. So as a result, negative 16 cannot be a possible value for A. If that's a little confusing, hang in there with me. Let's try choice B. Let's say our A value is equal to negative 14, right? Then if we plug in negative 14 right there, what are we going to get? We're going to get negative 10 squared plus Y minus 19 squared. And that has to equal 121. And we know negative 10 squared is just going to be 100. And plus whatever that is, we get 121. Now, because this is being squared here, we're always going to end up with a positive value. And when we add it to 100, is it possible to end up with a 121 and have our equation be true? Yes, it is possible. So it is possible that the point is on the line when A is equal to negative 14. So that's going to be our answer. But let's go over other choices just to be sure. Let's try C. A is equal to 11. When A is 11, we are going to get 15 squared plus the second half has to equal 121. And 15 squared is 225 plus whatever. And we have to again subtract something in order for us to be left with 121. So choice C again is not going to work. And same thing for choice D, we're plugging in a even bigger number. If we plug in a 19 here, we're going to end up with a 23 squared and that's just not going to work. So there are three main takeaways from this question. One is the idea of 
a point being on the line. When the point is on the line, the equation must be true when you plug the coordinates in. Second is that whenever anything is squared, you're always going to end up with a positive value. And last but not least, the third main takeaway is that you have to be really quick with these squares. Whenever you're doing stuff like 10 squared and 12 squared and 15 squared, you don't want to pull up your calculator and waste time plugging it in. Even though it's going to take just a few seconds, all those times add up and they become extra time you can spend on all your other questions you have hard time on. So one thing I tell my students is for them to memorize the squares from 10 squared all the way up until 17 squared so that they can save time and spend those time on the hard questions they are having trouble with. And so far, I really haven't seen SAT asking anything like 18 squared, 19 squared. And one last thing I want to mention is a variation of this question right here. You see how the question is asking for a point that lies on the circle. There have been questions where it's asking which point lies inside of the circle and which point lies outside of the circle. And what you need to know about those types is that when the point is like inside of the circle, then your left side will be less than the right side. And when the point is outside of the circle, then your left side will be greater than your right side. And that's everything you need to take away from this question. Let's move on to the next one. Number two, the graph of this is shown above where B and C are constants. What's the value of B and C? So this is our typical parabola question, but it involves multiple steps. So most SAT questions, we are usually given an equation and we have to work something with the graph. But this question is kind of the other way around. They give us the graph over here and they're asking us to figure out the parts of the equation. So how can we figure out what B is equal to and what C is equal to? Well, when we look at the graph, we know where the vertex is, Y intercept is, and where the X intercepts are. And specifically, vertex has a coordinate of negative one and negative eight. And if we think about the vertex, we also know the vertex formula, which becomes negative B over two A, that gives us the X coordinate of the vertex. And we know that the X coordinate of the vertex is going to be at negative one. So we know that minus B over two A has to equal negative one. And do we know what B is? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. But we do know what our A value is equal to. And what's our A? Our A is just going to be positive two. So if we plug it in, we're gonna get negative one is equal to negative B over two, which is gonna be four, which means negative B is equal to negative four. That means our B is equal to four. So we got four for B right there. Let's find out what C is equal to. So for the SAT, when it comes to a parabola equation or a line equation, a single number without any x's are referring to the y-intercept, which is the value of y when our x is equal to zero. And why is that? Because when you plug in x for zero on this equation right there, we're going to get y is equal to zero plus zero plus c. So when your x is equal to zero, your y value is going to be equal to c. And if we take it to this parabola graph right here, when our x value is zero, our y value is going to be the y-intercept, which is going to be just negative six. So our C value will be negative six. B times six is going to be negative 24. That's going to be our final answer. Does that make sense? So the main takeaway from this question, guys, is one, having a really good understanding of all the parabola concepts. There's a lot of rules you have to memorize and a lot of formulas you have to memorize. And once you have everything in your head, then you're going to be able to piece everything together and apply to a question like this. And I'm going to link in the comments on a couple videos that show you exactly what you need to know about parabolas for the SAT. Next, let's go to the third question. The question says a circle in the XY plane has center at right here and line T is tangent to the circle at point right there, which the following point also lies on line T. So let's visualize what's going on in the question. So we have a circle with a center at minus one, one. So it's going to be minus one and then one right there. And we have a point five, negative four that is tangent to the circle. So five and negative four is going to be five and negative four somewhere right there. So let's say we have a circle that looks something like this, and we have a line that is tangent at point five, negative four. And tangent just means it touches the circle at exactly one point. And what the question is asking here is, of these four points, which of them is also on this line? So here's the first main takeaway about a point being on the line. When it comes to verifying whether the point is on the line, you first have to get the equation of the line. So line T right there, let's say line T is in the form of Y equals MX plus B. And if we want to check whether point B is on the line or not, we simply plug in the X and Y value into this equation right there. And if the equation is equal, if the equation is true, then that's how you know that point is on the line. If the equation is true, point is on the line. If the equation is not true, then the point is not on the line. 
So what that tells us is that we have to first figure out what the equation is for line T. And to figure out the equation, we simply need to find out the slope and the y-intercept. And how are we going to find that? What we're given is that the center of the circle is at negative 1 and 1. And guys, I just realized minus 1 and 1 is not, <laughs> not there. So let's fix that. Minus 1 and 1. There we go. Negative 1 and 1. It's all right, guys. We're going to be okay. So back to the point, how can we find out what the slope is for this line right there? Well, the thing is, we know this line is what? It's tangent to the circle. And whenever a line is tangent to the circle, it forms a right angle with the radius. It is perpendicular to the radius. And when two lines are like perpendicular, we know that their slopes are going to be what? Negative reciprocal. For example, if the slope for this thing is at two, then for the perpendicular line, it's going to be just negative reciprocal, negative one half. So once we find the slope of the radius, then we can find the slope of the perpendicular line. And once we find out what M is, then we can find out what B is, we can pop it in, and we can all be happily ever after. So let's find the slope of the radius first. Slope is going to be in the formula of y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So y2 and y1 minus 4 minus 1, and x2 minus x1 is going to be minus negative 1, which means our slope is going to be negative 5 over 6. And because that's the slope of the radius, we have to do a negative reciprocal, which will bring us to 6 over 5, and that will be the slope for our line t. So our equations can be y is equal to 6 over 5x plus b. And how can we find out what the y-intercept is? You simply plug in the x and y coordinate into x and y, and you can be left with b. And b is the only unknown variable, and you can solve for b. So if we plug it all in, we're going to get negative 4 is equal to 6 over 5 times 5 plus b. That cancels out. We get b is equal to negative 10. So our final equation is going to be minus 10, like so. And now that we got our equation, we can plug in these points and see which one works out. So for choice A, if we plug in x as 0 right there, we're going to get negative 10 for y. So choice A is going to be out. Choice B, if we plug in 4 right there, that's going to give us a fraction and not a 7. So that's going to be out. Well, choice C, when 10 is plugged in, we're going to get 6 over 5 times 10. That's going to give us 12 minus 10. That's going to be 2. So choice C is correct. And choice D, if we plug in 11 right there, that's going to give us massive disgusting fraction. So choice D is going to be out. So C is the only possible answer. So the main takeaway from this question is, one, if the SAT ever asks you to test whether the point is on the graph or not, you simply first have to generate the equation. Because once you have the equation, you can plug in the coordinates into the equation. And if the equation is true, then the point is on the line. If the equation is not true, then the point is not on the line. So point on the line, plug into equation. And second, when a line is tangent to the circle, it forms a right angle. It is perpendicular to the radius. And you can use the idea of perpendicular to find out what your slope is. Because the slope of the perpendicular line will be negative reciprocal to the slope of the radius. And one last thing, guys, you technically could have solved this question without generating the full equation. Once you have the slope, and we know slope is going to be rise over run, you could have applied rise and run to this coordinate right there and end up with choice C. Like if we increase minus four by six, we're gonna get two. And if we increase five by five, we're gonna get 10. So we could have gotten 10 too. But sometimes the numbers are not going to be as clean like that. So if you're the type of person to catch small things like this, awesome, great, go ahead and do that. But if you are an average Joe like rest of us, then simply generate the equations. It's not going to take too much longer Then pop in the coordinates and you're going to be good to go. And on top of these three questions, there are more questions that are new to the SAT and you definitely want to be familiar with. And we go over them in this video, so make sure you learn how to do those as well. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys on the next video.